Hi, I'm Katrine, your average 16-year-old with a not-so-average life. Before I dive into my story, hit that like and subscribe button, will ya? Trust me, you don't want to miss the drama that's about to unfold. All right, let's get into it. Picture this, high school, where every day feels like a walk on a fashion runway. I've got this charm, you know, and somehow boys just seem to flock around me. Not bragging, but it's like I have this magnetic field or something. There was this one time during lunch. I was sitting with my squad laughing over some silly meme when Jake, the basketball team's captain, came over. Hey, Katrine, going to the game tonight? Jake flashed his signature grin. I played it cool. Might drop by if I don't have anything better to do. Jake's face lit up. Awesome. I'll look for you in the stands. That's just a glimpse. But not everyone's a fan, especially the other girls. Whispers and eye rolls? Part of my daily routine. Now let's talk about my dad. Single parent, super strict. He's got this old school mindset. You know, girls shouldn't date until they're like 30 or something. So when rumors of my heart stealing reached him, World War III erupted at home. Dating is off limits, Katrine. I'm serious, Dad said sternly one evening. His face was all stern, like a judge delivering a verdict. But Dad, I'm not even dating. Can I have friends who are boys? I tried reasoning, but it was like talking to a brick wall. No arguments, I've made up my mind. He cut me off. The next day, things got next level weird. Enter Mr. Stone, this bulky, no-smile bodyguard Dad hired to keep an eye on me. Imagine having a shadow that's six to two inches and looks like he eats nails for breakfast. At school, Mr. Stone was like a hawk, watching my every move. My friends found it freaky, and honestly, so did I. Is he going to follow you around everywhere? My best friend Mia asked, her eyes wide as she glanced at Mr. Stone standing a few feet away. Looks like it, I sighed, feeling my freedom slipping away. Mr. Stone was unshakable. I tried losing him in the crowd, ducking into the library, even the old tie your shoelace and run trick. But nope, he was always right behind me, as silent and immovable as a mountain. That's how my life turned into a teenage version of a spy movie, minus the cool gadgets and car chases. Just me, trying to live my life with a bodyguard tailing me like I'm the president's daughter or something. So, there I was, trying to live my best life, but with Mr. Stone lurking around. It felt more like a reality TV show where I'm constantly being watched. Imagine having a shadow that's more like a walking, talking fortress. This one time, I was at the mall with my friends, trying to pick out a cute outfit. I held up a dress. This is super cute, right? Suddenly, from behind a rack of clothes, Mr. Stone emerged, giving a slight nod. It was like having a fashion police, minus the fashion sense. My friends were trying hard not to laugh. Does he give fashion advice too? Mia joked. But the laughter died as soon as they saw my not amused face. Then there was the time at the cafeteria. I was sitting with my crew, and this guy, Chris, decided to come over. He's kind of cute, in a nerdy way. Hey, Katrine, got plans this weekend? Chris asked, leaning against our table. Before I could answer, Mr. Stone stepped up, towering over Chris like a giant. She's busy, he grunted. Chris's eyes widened. Uh, okay, man, no problem. I watched as Chris practically sprinted away. There went my chance of a normal conversation. And let's not forget the school dance. I was all dolled up feeling myself, you know? But with Mr. Stone on my tail, it was more of a solo mission. I tried to mingle, dance a bit, but with him standing nearby, it was like dancing next to a brick wall. Hey, wanna dance? A brave soul asked me. I glanced at Mr. Stone, who was already giving the guy the look. Maybe next time, I mumbled, resigning to my fate. You'd think I'd give up, right? Nope, I'm Katrine, and I don't back down. I tried every trick in the book to ditch Mr. Stone. There was the bathroom escape plan, which failed miserably. I mean, how could I outrun a guy who probably has GPS tracking on me? Then came the library hide-and-seek attempt. I sneaked into the library, weaving through the shelves. For a moment, I thought I lost him. But nope, there he was, casually reading a newspaper as if he knew I'd pop up there. So yeah, my social life? Down the drain, popularity, taking a nosedive. But hey, at least I'm safe, right? Alex was the new kid on the block, a total mystery wrapped in a hoodie. The first time we met was in the school library. I was pretending to read a book while actually plotting my next escape plan from Mr. Stone. You know, if you keep frowning at that book, it might just frown back, Alex said, casually sliding into the seat across from me. I looked up, a bit startled. It's just my I'm-being-watched-by-a-bodyguard face. Alex chuckled. Yeah, I've noticed. Mr. Stone, right? He's like a walking, talking fortress. I couldn't help but laugh. More like a fortress with a mood of a thundercloud. That's how it started. Alex didn't care about my heart-stealer rep. He was just chill. 
We hit it off, talking about everything from music to the latest meme trends. Turns out Alex was a bit of a prankster with a knack for sneaking around. I've got an idea, he whispered one day. How about a little adventure away from your shadow? I was intrigued. Go on. With Alex, I experienced the most daring, heart-pumping adventures, like the time we sneaked out during gym class for ice cream. Alex created a diversion and I slipped away while Mr. Stone was busy being a responsible adult. Quick, this way, Alex whispered as we dashed across the street to the ice cream shop. My heart raced, not just from the thrill of escaping, but from the excitement of doing something normal for once. Hanging out with Alex, I realized how much I'd missed real connections. We'd sit on the rooftop sometimes, just talking. You know, Katrine, there's more to you than the rumors say, Alex said one evening as we watched the sunset. I smiled. Yeah, and you're not just the new kid. Our friendship was my little oasis in the midst of chaos. No flirting, no drama, just two friends enjoying the simplicity of life. It was refreshing, like a cool breeze on a hot day. But every adventure has its close calls, like the time Mr. Stone almost caught us at the arcade. Alex's quick thinking saved the day, but it was a close shave. Maybe we should be more careful, I said, my heart still racing from the near miss. Alex nodded, agreed, but hey, it's worth it, right? Totally worth it. For the first time in a long time, I felt like a regular teenager, not Katrine the heart stealer or Katrine the girl with a bodyguard, just Katrine. So I started seeing things differently, you know? It's like I was growing up or something. Scary, right? First, let's talk about the balance act. Juggling my social life, school, and not getting on my dad's or Mr. Stone's bad side was like a circus act. I began taking my responsibilities more seriously. Homework? Done. Chores? No problem. Hanging out with Alex? Sure, but in a less sneaky way. Looks like you're trying to win the Daughter of the Year Award, Alex joked one day at our usual hangout spot, the school rooftop. I laughed, more like trying not to be grounded till I'm 30. But here's the kicker. Mr. Stone started easing up, like he would actually let me have some space. I guess he noticed I wasn't the reckless teen he thought I was. One day, Mr. Stone even cracked a smile. You're not as much trouble as I thought, Katrine. I grinned. Glad to exceed your expectations, Mr. Stone. Then bam, the crisis hit. It was like a scene straight out of a teen drama. During a school event, one of my classmates, Lily, had a severe allergic reaction. Panic mode on, and guess who was closest to her? Yep, yours truly, Katrine. I remembered my first aid training from that summer camp. Everyone, stay calm. Has anyone got an EpiPen? The crowd was freaking out, but I kept my cool. Alex found an EpiPen, and I administered it keeping Lily stable until the paramedics arrived. After the chaos, Dad heard about what happened. The look on his face was something I'd never seen before. It was like pride mixed with a realization. Katrine, I... I'm sorry I underestimated you, he said later that evening. We were sitting in the living room, the tension between us melting away. Dad, I get why you were worried, but I can handle things, you know? He nodded. I see that now. You're growing up, making the right choices. That heart-to-heart -heart with Dad, it changed everything. It felt like I'd earned his trust. Like he finally saw me as more than just his little girl who needed protection. So there you have it. My journey from a carefree teen to someone who could handle a crisis. Not saying I'm all wise and mature now, but hey, it's a start. So things have been pretty chill since the incident, as I like to call it. Dad's cool with me hanging out with Alex now. No sneaking around, no Mr. Stone breathing down my neck. It's like I'm living in a totally different world. Looks like you're officially the responsible one now, Alex teased as we hung out at our usual spot after school. I rolled my eyes. Please, I'm still the fun Katrine, just with a bit less drama. But here's the real twist. I kind of became a role model at school. Yeah, me, can you believe it? I guess handling that allergy crisis showed people a different side of me. In the hallways, I'd overhear whispers. That's Katrine, the girl who saved Lily. She's pretty cool. Even the teachers looked at me differently. Miss Johnson, my English teacher, gave me this knowing smile one day. You've shown great maturity, Katrine. Keep it up. And Mr. Stone, we're actually on good terms now. He's more like that cool uncle who's got your back, but from a distance. One afternoon, as he dropped me off at school, Mr. Stone said, You know, Katrine, I'm impressed with how you've handled everything. I smirked. Thanks, Mr. Stone. Who knew I had it in me? But the best part? my relationship with my dad. It's like we're on the same wavelength now. We'd have these heart-to-hearts talking about life, school, future plans, real deep stuff. Dad, I'm thinking of joining the student council, I mentioned casually over dinner one night. He looked up, 
surprised but pleased. That's a great idea, Katrine. I'm proud of you. So as I sit here, reflecting on everything that's happened, I realize how much I've changed. I'm not just the girl who flirted with boys or the girl with a bodyguard. I'm Katrine, just a regular teenager, figuring out life one step at a time. I've learned that it's okay to have fun, but it's also important to be responsible and make smart choices. And most importantly, I've learned the value of trust, both in myself and in others. Thanks for following my story. It's been a wild ride, but I wouldn't have it any other way. But before I go, I've got a question for you. If you were in my shoes, how would you have handled having a bodyguard following you around? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'm super curious to know. Your comments and opinions really fuel our passion to share more stories like this. And hey, if you enjoyed my journey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and show some love. It means the world to us and keeps these stories coming. Thanks for being awesome, and I can't wait to see your responses. Catch you later.